and uh, playing the background right now. It is Prince KB featuring Eid Aziz. The name of the song is Tayari. It definitely gets you moving. And before that one, it was a Pink Third with At My Most featuring Galhari and Omalay. Understand that the song we started with bring us to exactly 20 minutes after the hour seven o'clock. So best known for her role as Tiamo in the SAFTA award winning uh, Gomorrah, Lerato Mukoka is, is an independent uh, script writer and screenwriter actually. Uh, she's an actress and also an uh, indie filmmaker and she is my guest tonight. We get an opportunity to get to know about her better. Madam, are you ready for us? <laughs> I wanted that yeah, button yeah, that goes. Yeah, yeah. Why is it? Why is it? It's not cute, sorry, but yeah. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Next time, we're going to get it there. Um, thank you so much for having me. I'm actually having such a blast, and yeah. I think it's such a burst of fresh air to um, get to do something so outside of your comfort zone, uh -huh. so outside of your day to day. Yeah. Yeah. So thank That's you lovely. for having That's me. Lovely. I'm, I'm glad uh, you are enjoying it because we have been waiting for you to come here. Hey. <sighs> Trials and tribulations. <laughs> but you're here. Yeah. You're yeah. Here. You're excited. So. What made you want to be an actress? Let's start there because everybody knows you from the screen. Yeah. Hey, what made you want to take that route? I think that question is so difficult to ask I and mean, to answer because it's so bizarre. Like to me, because that's not something I was like, oh, I want to be an actress. Yeah. You know. Um, so I guess my immediate answer would be what made me want to become an actress. I think God decided that for me, to be very honest. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, yes, I had this inkling um, that I wanted to be great. I had this inkling that I wanted to be known by people, <laughs> which is weird because I'd walk around copy and pay, yeah. <laughs> pretending worry people are looking at me and that was my thing. Um, and people would always say to me, oh my gosh, you should go into acting. And, and I took that very seriously when I was like, how old was I? I think I was like eight. Mm. I found an agency. Don't ask me how. Yeah. But I found an agency and I made the call myself. What? And the lady was like, how old are you? And I was like, I'm eight. <laughs> She's like, I would love to sign you, but you're in Rustenburg. I love oh, your confidence. No. Like, so I think then I just became very academic and I became very focused in school. And I was just like, that's my brand, yeah. just being the school kid. And yes, I'd go into drama just to scratch that itch, but it wasn't a thing that I was like, oh, I want to be an actress. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so I think it's just a gift and an opportunity that God gave me. Yeah. And I'm just trying to steward that as best mm -hmm. as possible. And talking about childhood, uh, who has been that greatest inspiration in your life? Um, I don't think I have a single person that I can point out who's my inspiration because it looks different every single season. Yeah. When I was a kid, I didn't look up to celebrities much. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like I just liked my mom. I was like, she's cool. She's a badass. <laughs> she's my inspiration. She makes, she makes me feel like I want to do better. Yeah. So I guess when I was a kid, it was my mom. But now I'd say... My friends, which is weird, but I promise you my friends are my inspiration yeah. because when I feel like, oh, okay, maybe I should give up or maybe this is the standard, they just constantly raise the bar for me. Those women sit on my throat day to day. I just see them taking over the world and I'm like, I can't not do it. Yeah. I have to be a part of what these ladies are doing. Mm -hmm. So I think right now, probably my inner circle are my inspiration. They're ah. the ones who pray with me. They're the ones who cry with me. I pray with them. I cry with them. So, yeah. That is really wonderful because you don't hear a lot um, that people would say, my friends inspire me. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's obvious that you coming together as friends, it is about taking each other forward. It's, it, it is about support, I can assume, mm. you know, making sure that everybody keeps pushing and that um, as I do something, you look at me and you feel, I can actually do that. Yeah. Is, is, is it that kind of a situation? As... Yeah. And I think it's, it slaps different because you don't just say things to each other, yeah. you know, because when you have your friends, it's one thing for me to look at Oprah and be like, yo, Oprah, and then do all that research about Oprah and see how she's living her life. Yes. Yeah. But when you are 
close to someone and you do life with someone i see you when it's hard and i see you get up mm -hmm. i see you when it's easy i see your character i see who you are i see mm -hmm. you live that life you're not just about what you're saying mm -hmm. you know but you actually actually see you being a great person yeah you know um and it's also not just about what you do mm -hmm. it's about seeing you as a friend to other people seeing uh -huh. you as a child to your mother seeing you as a wife to your husband and i'm like i get to see all of these things and i'm like i'm inspired by y'all amazing yeah yeah so it's it's yeah i see everything and i think that's what the difference is mm -hmm. for me with my friends yeah and you, you touched on childhood. What, what was it like growing up in Rustenburg, if that's where you actually grew up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How was your childhood like? Yo, um, I don't know how to answer that question. It was good. <laughs> I don't know. I think I had a pretty decent childhood. Yeah. Like, I don't have any weird stories. I'm like, I don't want to get into that. But I don't have any weird stories. Thank God. Like, that's yeah. something I thank God for. It's a for. blessing. Yeah. 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 Like, I don't have any weird scars or anything. I think growing up, um, the best way to put it is that I was, I think I actually, in retrospect, I see I lived in my head a lot. Oh. I imagined a lot of things. I would see a lot of things. I would picture a lot of things. And I think that's what my childhood was, was like for me. It was an adventure. Mm -hmm. um, I just fill in the gaps yeah. where it seems a bit mundane and a bit boring and a bit <laughs> like custom bag. What can you do? Oh, yeah. You know? Um, and my parents did the best that they could to give me the world. And I appreciate that, you know, I didn't have the fanciest things. I didn't get to travel. I didn't get to do all of those things. So I get to do a lot of it in my no head, mind. you know. So that's the best way to describe my childhood. It was very wholesome, very safe. I felt very supported growing up. Mm -hmm. um, didn't matter what I wanted to do, crazy or not. I have very black traditional, not traditional, but they like, yeah. and they old. I'm like, mama, give us a ballet, ballet king, and a ballet guy, you know? Um, so I think that's the best way to describe my childhood. Your childhood, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you, you know, you get into society, mm. right? You, you, out of that safety net, right? Some of the challenges first that you can think of that you found yourself uh, being able to overcome as a young girl? Mm. As a young girl, challenges, I think, like I explained, I didn't have anything <clears throat> weird that I felt like this is a real mountain that I need to face or something that I need mm -hmm. to conquer. But one thing I can say as a, as a girl growing up is that I always challenged whatever I felt like I had to do just because I was a girl. Uh. Like that's something I always had where... Um, I don't know if you could call it like being a tomboy. Like I had that yeah. phase as well because I was like, no, I want to do, I want to wear this. Where, where did as a that girl. come from? Though? Um, it just came from. I think I just needed an outlet, I guess, because I know that I tend to. I, I I don't admit it often, but I think I do have a big personality, mm -hmm. and I have a fight in me. Yeah. So. I'm gonna go against whatever I feel like I'm, I wanna go against. Challenges so, they just go. Yeah. <laughs> so if, for example, at home, like if they're like, no, you must do it because you're a girl. I'm like, no, I'll call my cousins and be like, no, you guys must also do this thing, yeah. you know? But I'm so glad my mom instantly did this thing and balanced it out. And then when we agreed to disagree, it was fine, but I fought my battle. Yeah. Um, or like, for example, when I was in high school, we wanted to play soccer. There was no girls soccer team and then we started our own soccer team. Mm. So just stuff like that, just being like, mm. yeah, yeah, we girls, but we want to do that. Uh -huh. So we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, my trip dance, I went with my best friend. I didn't take a dude. Is it? I took a girl. Gee. I was like, I'm going with my best friend. I'm going with a girl. Yeah. Yeah. So just weird stuff like that. Just. Yeah, the one really different. weird challenge, like yeah. marching for something in particular. But if I felt like, why can't I do it? I'm going to do it. Mm. Mm. Amazing stuff. Uh, she is Lerato Mkoka. She plays Tiamo on Gomorrah. If you don't know her, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. What are you so, watching? What are you watching? <laughs> you should be watching the softer award winning to Come on, somebody. in South Africa, right? Yeah. So we just got to learn about her childhood. We're going to go back into music just to allow her to take a breather. And when we come back, we get to learn more uh, about her now, taking it further uh, to when now she has grown and become the young lady that she has become now. And 
and that is the weekend with sacrifice before that one it was t-pain with kelani uh, i like that that is the name of the song and uh, we started with summer walker with no love bringing us to exactly 35 minutes after the hour seven o'clock you're still on the talk with myself tolo but i have someone special in studio she is lerato mukoka you probably know her as tiamo from gomora and uh, just before we went to uh, the break um we were talking about her childhood which i feel that you have been so blessed to grow mm. up like that and probably that's why you're so bubbly you're so lovely you're full what? of positive energy uh, i promise you like yeah these Definitely. intros keep getting better like <laughs> you say every time you're going to introduce me i'm gonna shock her yeah i'm gonna surprise her but, but it's, the, it's the truth right yeah. just, just uh you know uh, getting out what i'm experiencing you know in your space right now yeah thank yeah. you i it's appreciate that it's a yeah. pleasure we, we, we have to let people know the good mm. stuff they are and the, the positive energy they bring yeah so Bcom degree in financial sciences. Yeah. You're a graduate, of course, from the University of Pretoria. Yeah. What's the degree your first choice? The what's the degree? Well, what's your choice. first choice? No, not by a long shot. Is it? Funny story, right? Um, I towards the end of high school, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I want to take a gap year to figure out what it is I want to do. And there was this gap year program that I was even pushing to get um, sponsors for. I was like, okay, it's is fine. It? My parents don't have to pay. I'll try and get myself sponsors. And then I got offered a bursary. And life is so weird. Like my teachers would be like, yeah, you must, yeah. And then I do it. And then, and then I got the bursary. And then my parents were like, oh, what's a gap year? Yeah. You're going to school. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, I hate physics because I did physics and I okay. was like, you oh, physical sciences, chemistry, all that stuff. I can't, um, I'll have to go into finance because I enjoy numbers. Mm. So mm, accounting, I literally took a form because I didn't know what exactly I wanted to do. My dad was like a cure sciences. I was like, I don't want to die. So I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, and then I literally took a paper and I was like, oh, financial sciences. And that's what and I applied for. It. And that's literally what I applied for. And then I went to school for that. Interesting. Yeah. So it wasn't my first choice. It wasn't even a choice yeah. of mine. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but mm. yeah. That's, so so how, yeah. how important do you feel gap year is for people that want to experience it? I think if you, I think it's necessary and ideally mm -hmm. for me personally, mm -hmm. if this was my country and my world, yeah. I would say everybody should take a gap year after school mm -hmm. because there's so much pressure there's so much there's so much you you come from this bubble mm. that's high school and you're going out into the real world so i would rather everyone just takes a takes a year to see what the real world is like mm -hmm. and to really figure out what it is you want to do and even if that changes down the line at least you've had that exposure something that informs your decision not Makes just sense. like i think and engineering, I think, I think, you know, mm -hmm. unless you really did your research and you're sure about it, but I think ideally I would prefer that everyone does that. Not everyone has the luxury to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and not everyone has the discipline to go back to school after a gap year. Mm -hmm. So I would back it if mm -hmm. my kids or my siblings or my nieces and nephews asked me if they yeah. wanted to go for a gap year. I'd be like, yeah, sure. As long as you're not sitting at home, yeah. there's a program mm -hmm. that you're following mm -hmm. to make sure that by the end of the year, you are ready for the real world. You're yeah. ready for the decision that you're making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I would have loved to do the program um, that I wanted to do, but I know I would have been, I would have been a totally different person. You reckon? I would have been a totally different person because it was something that was meant to help me travel around Africa. Okay. But um, I was meant to facilitate um basically it's like a leadership thing where okay. i train people and so i would i know by the end of it i would have been a totally different person and i probably wouldn't be where i am right sure. now yeah i don't think so i think things happened the way that they had to uh yeah 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 and, and you graduated <laughs> you graduated. started working um so what what was it like at work for you what what did you do and what was this experience like <laughs> your work was so first of all, you're in Rustenburg, yeah. let's start there. You're in Rustenburg. <laughs> yeah. I love Rustenburg, I love my small town. It's a mining town. Mm -hmm. There isn't much to do. Two, you're in an industry, you're in mining. You're in an industry that's very old, an industry that's very 
to, uh, you know, yeah. um, there's a lot of old people. So one thing I will say about working in the mines was that I was the youngest person all the time. Sure. Oh, and not like, no, I'm, I'm 21, they, someone is 24. No, like I'm 21, they 41. Like that was, yeah. that was just standard. I just knew that every time I'm in a room, I'm the youngest person in the room. So in some aspect, yes, I grew because I was pushed to grow up mm. a bit, like to speak up, like in board meetings. I'd be like, no, I want to sit at the back. And then the guy's like, you still think, you're, <laughs> you know, if they're speaking, like, for example, like times where I feel, I'd feel like, okay, you guys are speaking of Afrikaans, I don't understand, I need you guys to speak in English so yeah. I can understand you, so I can hear you. And mm -hmm. then actually appreciate that, like, oh, sorry, you made, you know, um, so it just taught me to stand up for myself more, to speak up more. Obviously, uh, you're working with miners, you're working, you're working with people who manage shafts, mm. and mm. you're giving them a budget. Ish. And Ish. now you have to explain why you can't give them more of a budget. So you have to be like, I, sorry, dude. <laughs> and you have to stand up for yourself and really be like, but this is your budget, make it work. Mm no, this little girl is not gonna, but she just did. I have to put my signature on this and mm. I have to explain to my manager why I gave you more money. So what? So I did grow, but for the most part, I don't want to lie. It wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing every day um, with old people who would even tell me leave. They'd be like, don't stay here. You're too young to be here. We have kids, we got stuck here. So just go out and see the world. Um, here in, like there were days that were just like, People remind you that you're a kid. Like they really, even if you're like, no, I'm gonna fight back. Yeah. They remind you I'm your manager and you're a child. Ish. So there were days that were very, very tough. Mm -hmm. There were times like I'd go to the bottom and just cry. Ish. Like, I don't wanna be here. What do you mean I'm gonna be here for four years? I have to make sure I get this money and go. Mm -hmm. I was ready to pay them to leave. Sure. I was ready to save money and be like, here's your money back. I don't wanna be here. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So could, could that be, one of the reasons that made you leave and go for storytelling and, and just pursue the artistry mm. or because I, I, another person would, would have thought i mean if god experience you could have gone into the corporate yeah um, it's less risky yeah. it's more comfortable um you know wh why would you leave all of that and just yeah. go to this quite risky and unpredictable and unsettling yeah. environment yeah I get that. Like, why don't you just leave the job and just stay in the industry? I get you. Um, I think, so sorry, on the other side that I didn't mention, on the other side of, of, of me being in Rasselberg in that time, though, yeah. is that um, I was doing um, a lot of work outside of work, which is more like personal, like working with the youth and stuff. And that's something that really kept me grounded because I needed a reason to be like, why am I here? Like, I needed a reason. And I knew like, because of that and the work that I was doing, mm -hmm. I knew that I had to be in Rustenburg. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't regret it because I understood what God was doing mm. in that time, yeah. you know, and he, what he was teaching me and even me being like, I'm leaving. That was a big push. Mm. That was a big one. So I, I always wanted to be in the creative industry. Um, I think I discovered what it is. I actually want to do exactly what it is pretty late. So it just okay. looked like different things at different points. Yeah. Was photography and then videography and then directing and then writing. And then I was like, ooh, filmmaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. You know, and I found that out. I remember third year, I found it out. And I was like, this this is the thing that I want to do. Mm. And yes, I do it in my own time. I push and go to music video shoots and work with directors and do all that work. So this is the time when we're at after? No, no, no. This is U University of Pretoria okay. when I was still okay. studying finance. That's yeah. when I discovered that. So I was okay. like, this is actually what I want to do. Oh. Um, so going into work, I already knew. Okay. I was like, okay, after this two year, okay. God forbid, for I'm so glad it was two years. <laughs> after this two year period, you're saving your money and you are gone so i already yeah. had a plan mm -hmm. had an exit plan so even with people who are like i want to leave I'm like have a plan yeah can't yeah. just leave yeah, unless you like I, I was about to ask you that now you, you're leaving the, the corporate you go into a creative space how do you then make sure that you prepare yourself yeah. to get in and, and and that smooth transition that is mm. necessary as well because now it's two different environments yeah. no you need to prepare you need to have a plan you can't just you need to know where you're going to live. Mm -hmm. You need to know where, how you're going to pay your rent. 
Um, Cause it was the first time I had to pay rent, mm -hmm. and that's money I saved up throughout the two years. I'm like I could have, I could have eaten that money. I could have eaten that money, <laughs> money, but I said no. You go to school, man. You go yeah. to school, and you have to have a plan. So my plan was school, and my plan was a part time job. Okay. Um, but I didn't plan to get paid. I was just like, I can just get exposure and I can just mm -hmm. get connections. That's gonna help me when I'm at school. So that yeah. when I'm done with school, just you have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And how did you get into acting? Um, through social media. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I saw a post here. Yeah. Like papa. And I went for the audition. I didn't think I'd get it. I really didn't think I'd get it. I was just like, I just want to see like what happened. Yeah. And then I did it. And then they liked me. And they said, come back. And I was like, OK. OK. <laughs> I guess I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> you guys always come back. And then yeah. I went back. And then they said, come back. And then I went back and we're here now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's literally how it happened. And didn't go through an agent. Yeah. Um obviously if you if you are in the industry and you're trying to get into the industry, that's your best bet to go through an agency. Mm -hmm. Um but still keep your eye open to opportunities that you can grab yourself. Yeah. Because that's how I got, mm -hmm. that's how I got in. Yeah. Mm. Amazing stuff. So we're going to talk more about that when we come back, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. So that is the voice of uh, Lerado Mugoka, known as Tiamo from Gomora. We are going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to go into a music. Remember that we still are taking comments and questions. You are welcome to send yours. You can send them on our WhatsApp number because we're not taking live calls. So our WhatsApp number, if you don't know it by now, uh, I'm disappointed. It is 082-531-0976. Otherwise, you can tweet and tag us at Opulence Radio. Actually, this one, I wanted to give some moves right there, but hey, yeah, we're in studio, so I have to keep it together, right? It is uh, 52 minutes after the hour, 7 o'clock, and that is Juanita Mus and uh, featuring Master KG and Gosazana daughter, Basetana and Obi Ama, Dali Wonga, and, 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 we know it's on a piano. For that one, it was FKJ with Blessed and we started with a Toby Sweet Poison. And uh, we're still in conversation with the lovely uh, Lerato Mukoka, who's known as Tiamo on the SAFTA Award winning telenovela, Gomorrah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the laugh. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> We have to do it with the love. We have to do it with the love, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you. Otherwise, it's not full. Otherwise, it's incomplete. Yeah. Otherwise, is it Gomorra? It's, it's not. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you are one of the main cast members, right? At, yeah. at the moment, uh, and for the third season now. How, how has the journey been for you? The journey has been... Uh, um, it's been very beautiful. It's one of those, like, it feels like life. You know, life mm -hmm. is, it has its pains. Yeah. You know, it has its downsides, obviously, but that's also a part of what makes life so beautiful. So it's it's pushed me to grow a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. I've grown a lot um, in my character. I've grown a lot personally in my personal life as a person. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think I think the best way to put it is is, is 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 that it's just been it's been beautiful it's been turbulent yeah um there's highs there's lows um but it's worth it mm -hmm. I think it's worth it and and it seems it. like a fun production to be at yeah. because I mean you guys go live at, at some point mm. like um, as often as you can mm. and it looks really fun yeah you know uh, but is is it really that or are you just putting it on live for us to think <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that <fun>. it's fun <laughs> <laughs> no it is fun like that's like it's like live when yeah. it's done, it's fun. and when it's fun it's fun so I think the difference with us name is that we're like a family uh, I, I i mean that like yeah. in every sense of the word like you know we can fight each other but we love each other mm -hmm. but it's never like i'm fighting you to fight you it's like i'm yeah, fighting you so that yeah, we yeah. can be better like together siblings, like siblings out of love. yeah so that's why when you see us going live like we know each other we just in each other's spaces you hardly see somebody going live and we want yeah you yeah. know 
Um, so yeah, it is fun. It's so fun, like, and you just know, like, sometimes, like when you look at the call sheet for what's yeah. gonna happen the next day and what you're shooting the next day, and you just yeah. think, ah, okay, I'm seeing this person, I know it's gonna be fun like this. Yeah. Or even it's like a tough shoot, but you know that in this space, I'm getting this energy, in this uh -huh. space, I'm getting this energy. Cause obviously the energy that I'll get from Mam Koni is different from the energy that I'll get from Siasanga, different yeah. from Sisi, different yeah. from Nandi, different mm -hmm. from Stello. It's just different from the guys on set as well. Like people don't know, we have so much from behind the scenes with yeah. the crew. With the so, crew. Some of the people that when were, they're not on set, you feel like I'm an Rashota. Um, yes. 110%. Who are Especially who, with who, the... Who you can, the... The names you can think of just off, your, of, of, of the cuff. Off the top of my head, let me tell you, and the guys at work will confirm, there's this sound guy called Tiwos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiwos, le, Shout was, out to Tiwos. Shout out to Tiwos. <laughs> Tiwos is our nigga. Like, Tiwos is the one guy, like, he's the most... Honest, I get, I get the game alone, man. Who like, yeah. wow, well, man. He doesn't care. He doesn't care who you are. Like, yeah. no one is safe in the room. Like, this is the <laughs> and no one is gonna do it right. But I'm fine. Like, I know, fluffy. Like, you wow, fluffy. And wow, fluffy. And that's T was like that. Yeah. Him. But he also loves you so much. Like when you do it, I'm fine. I will you clean? Yeah. I will you clean? So yes, yeah. yeah. And he looks when I stand, I love you, son. So he's literally like you feel it when he's not there. Mm -hmm. You know, because he also feels your energy. Like mm -hmm. like everyone feels your energy, but there are very few people who can see when something is wrong, when yeah. something is, you know, and they'll just try to make sure that everything's okay. Um, so that's him. There's another guy as well who's also constantly shouting at me and Nandi and <laughs> always annoy him because we know he's going to get irritated and he's going to shout at us. So, yeah, so there are a couple of people you you, you can feel like, oh, they're not here today. So yeah. even the guy who just sets up the lights quietly, but you can feel it when he's not there because, yeah, like there's just that thing because maybe even that guy is the guy when you're having mm -hmm. a bad day who's like, I don't know, shut <laughs> you know, over the peanuts. Like it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, amazing stuff. And and uh, Gomorrah is, is is one of the telenovelas rather in South Africa mm -hmm. that has some of the best actors and actresses. Oh, for sure. You yeah. know, um, for you, uh, what does it mean? You know, in your career to be among um, the best in the industry. It was very scary in the beginning. Um, obviously, because I'm coming with literally no experience, no exposure, nothing. Um, it was very scary, but I still, I always felt very honored um, to be working with people like that. And I had to constantly remind myself that, you know, you're, you're in this room for a reason. Mm. Um, show up. So to be with some of the best, who are not only like the best, but they're also such good teachers. Yeah, That's one thing as well about the guys at work. Everybody wants to learn and everybody wants to teach. Lovely. Everyone is so willing to teach that like we sit down together. I don't know, what do you think about this scene? Oh, I'm thinking this. Okay, what, have you, what do you think about my performance? What do you think about everybody can sit down and have a conversation, teach each other, help each other, critique each other. So yeah, it was scary, but I think it was the best training ground for me. Mm -hmm. I learned on the job. Yeah. I learned from somebody being like, try this, mm. try this. Mm. Or someone being like, I like this. Yeah. Well done. I see, I see you. You actually took my advice and I see you getting better. I see you getting more comfortable. I see you. Yeah. So I, I think, <clears throat> pardon me, that's the, yeah, it's, 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 it's been, I think it was the best um, situation to be brought into quite honestly. Yeah. You know, because we had the best of both worlds where there's, coming in which was like the young kids um some straight out of school some from other productions but all young all hungry and then you have this group of guys with accolades and well experienced well experienced well known. beasts yeah. you know and you just learn you just learn from that you learn from them and you also learn from the people next to you because you see how they learn and you learn from that mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Mm. And, and the script writing part of your life, uh, yeah. can, can you tell us a little bit about that aspect of your life? What can I say about that? Um, so what's interesting about this? So I think I'm still trying to find my feet as a, as a script writer. Okay. So a lot of it is trying to experiment as much as possible to mm -hmm. see what am I good at? Um, what can I improve? What do I actually want to do? Um, 
So I think I'm in that phase now where I'm doing a whole lot of experimenting. Okay. Um, what I can say about it though is that I have produced and written two short films, um, uh -huh. which was an interesting experience, good and bad. So like just an example about me experimenting is that with the first one, I was like, I'm going to tell a story without dialogue, with no words. So I'm just going to tell a story with two actors. And they, we're just going to use music, we're going to use lights, we're going to use action, we're going to use the faces, everything else to tell the story. That is Actual dialogue, yeah. And then the flip side of it was you're going to write a story with a lot of dialogue. Uh, a lot of dialogue. And then see, and then just learn from that experience. Mm -hmm. So those are my two um, short films, and that's what I did with that. And that's the journey that I'm on now. Um, I think that's the best thing I can tell you about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm still learning. Yeah. I'm still growing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm using stuff. Yeah. All the best with that. Talk about it again in about, in about a year or two. Oh, she's basically saying she's coming back and yeah. we, we're happy to hear it. <laughs> there's receipts, there's evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so do, do you uh, anticipate finding yourself more behind the scenes or... You, you're still drawn to acting and that's what you probably do forever? Hmm, that's a good one. So I have this weird theory that I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift behind the scenes now. God willing, mm -hmm. that's the plan. But for some odd reason, there's something inside me that's like, I'm probably gonna, at some stage in my life, find my way back in front mm. of the camera. Mm. I don't know why I feel that way. Like, I feel like, yeah, now I'm making that shift behind the scenes because that was the initial plan. Mm -hmm. That was our our journey, our dream. But I, I feel like at some point, I'm going to yeah. make it back in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and we'll, be, we'll still be here. We'll still be Checking here. you out. Checking you out. <laughs> I hope it's like, are you watching? <laughs> like, am I kid this door? Are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> so to wrap up our conversation, uh, what's coming? In the Next. future, shucks, man. Personal wise, career wise, mm. anything planned, anything in the pipeline, or you're just taking it day by day and seeing how things are going at the moment. Yeah, I'm the worst person to ask that question. <laughs> Why? Give me like I'm a how I'm demo. Like uh. I'm literally just like. God, just show me what happens tomorrow. And yeah. then like, which is weird because I'm a control freak and I want to see everything, but that hasn't been my life. Yeah. If you were going to tell me like three years ago, four years ago, that this is where I'd be, I'd be like, this is absolutely no way. There's absolutely no way. So I think in future, um, I'm a storyteller. Expect stories um, of impact that shift and shake the industry. Expect crazy collaborations. Mm -hmm. um, I plan to collaborate with the best, mm -hmm. really. Um, and then personally, you're nice. wholesomeness and growth. And yeah, I think I just, I just aspire to be somebody who just continues to grow into herself. Yeah. In a healthy and wholesome way and in a way that also serves the people around me. Um, I would love to work with the youth more. Mm -hmm. So expect that. I would love to work with women more. Mm -hmm. So expect that. Uh, yeah. There's a lot coming. There's a lot. That's a lot coming. And you're here for it. I was like, I said nothing. <laughs> That's, it's, it's a lot of exciting stuff. Yeah. Right? It's a lot of exciting stuff. And we wish you all the best for yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we always say uh, here at Auckland Radio that from your lips to God's ears. Mm. Uh, and may he, you know, guide you mm. and, and, and put the right resources and people in your path for all yeah. of that to come true. Amen. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to respect your people on your life. Do you have two questions or comments that they have so you can answer? This is your time to shine, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this, now we are taking the questions. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm trying to find one juicy and then one wholesome like. Okay, Th there's one that I remember. You were asked if uh, you, you, you like or you love Teddy. What was the question saying? Ha! <laughs> you, went, you, went, wait, you said you want juice. <laughs> I'll give you juice. <laughs> give us juice. So, give us juice. So the question was, do I like Teddy in real life? Yeah. I love the character Teddy. Yeah. The character Teddy. Okay. In real life. I'm joking. I definitely love Stella. That's yeah. that's my homeboy for real. Like 
we've grown so tight, mm -hmm. like so close, like since, cause we, since season one, ah. since the first day, like it's been, you yeah. know, and, and it's been it like, we, sense. it makes sense yeah. because obviously with people like leaving, like we lost Ama, we lost yeah. Sia, you know, um, we lost a couple of other people down the road. So it's just, it's still... you constantly do this because you go through all of that yeah. together. Um, through the shifts as well, in the story as well, mm. you know. Um, yeah, so I do love him. He has my heart. So my initial answer was that's the love of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And you stick so that's two. And I'm a stick <laughs> beside him. <laughs> okay, Tim will definitely stick beside him. Let me tell you something. Yeah. She will do that for sure. Yo, I, I'm trying to, okay, I'm trying to find a question. I'm really trying to scroll and all I'm seeing are names and ways and, 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 and okay shout out to a few names that you see shout out to mommy emily shout out to imani ketsiwe shout out to indami dot ww what up girl i saw my boy lindo here i see my boy tony eggs oh scariest part of your acting journey is that a question? That's a question, my boy. Okay, That's let's take that one then and wrap up. Um, the scariest thing. So I think one of the craziest things I've learned about acting, right? Because I think there's this weird um, idea that we're playing pretend. Mm. Like, what hala Yeah. But it takes so much skill and just generally so much for you to enter um your character mm -hmm. and the way that they think and the way that they feel and your body doesn't know the difference so when i'm taking in stress and i'm taking in trauma as tiamo it affects larato no it like i, mm, I promise you literally I, I promise you it literally does in the same way that if i choose a technique where i take something from my life to akin and experience that Tiamo is having, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm like, okay, she's lost someone and I'm like, who did I lose? And I felt the way that I feel like Tiamo should feel. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. What I'm yeah. also way but, 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 but then how, how do you then uh, break away from that? Be because it, it's your emotions yeah, yeah. That, that get into it. Yeah. Obviously, it, it, it affects how you think as well. How, how are you able to get back to Lerato from mm. Tiamo from there? Mm. And I'll tell you why I'm asking this question, which uh, this opened my eyes. Mm. When um, when um, Chusun Bedi spoke to Oprah, uh, she said they, they, they had a psychologist on set. Yeah. And there's a point when she got into a character so much that when they said cut, she had lost herself she immediately had to get debriefing from a psychologist for her to come back to Tuso. It happens. It really happens. And I'm so glad that people are starting to understand that more clearly. Like, yeah. So I think the first thing is technique. And that's why people need to go for training. You need to be trained to be able to go to that place and come out. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, part, that's a big part of your training, you know, to go there, to be able to find yourself again. Um, but I think it's also your personal responsibility, like seeing a psychologist, um, um, drama psychologist, mm -hmm. um, and also just finding things that remind you of who you are, because you also have to find things that make you connect with your character. Maybe when you're struggling to connect, like I have to find ways to, when I'm putting on uniform mm -hmm. or when I'm walking or when I'm about to say something, when, I, when they're about to call action to just have that trigger that, that brings me back to Tiamo if I'm struggling to find her. And I need to find that with myself as well and to find ways to draw myself to myself. Um, but I think for me, the scariest, to, the scariest part to answer that question is that I, I, I'm a pretty, I don't want to say strong person. So one thing I struggled with a lot growing up was showing... Um, emotions like mm. sadness i can show anger yeah but being sad and being broken and being hurt and crying it's difficult like it was difficult for me because i growing up i just told myself that i'm just gonna you're not gonna see me that uh. way and what was scary was having to do that in front of 
20 people. Mm. I have to cry in front of 20 people. <laughs> and it's not even like... And it's quiet. And they're playing and looking <laughs> at me. <laughs> and those are my tears. That's my cry. Strangers that don't know me. Yeah. So that was that was scary. And it's also that it's, it's not that I'm... I'm just, yes, there's breathing technique, but there's mm -hmm. it's also times where it's like, you actually in pain mm -hmm. in that scene, like you actually in pain and people are seeing you in that pain. And yeah, so just even a different example, right? Apart from that um, was when, is, is, is your body reacting to certain things? Like mm -hmm. when I've been grabbed, when I've been, when somebody mis like manhandled me yeah. or something has been shot at me mm -hmm. and there's something that's traumatic that happens to my character. My body reacts to that. My body actually reacts to that. And I remember we had a scene, and I know I'm a bit, oh, my examples are a bit all over the place, but mm. the, the picture I'm trying to paint is that you feel everything. Yeah. There was a scene that we had with Pretty mm -hmm. where she was leaving. And I felt such a sense of abandonment that came out of nowhere. I felt, I actually felt like, oh my, you're leaving, you are leaving me. Like you're actually leaving me. And it's because, everyone left her cousins yes on screen her cousins die but it's like yes you don't even get to like see them live and like yeah, they yeah, sort of yeah. like that disconnect but apart from that like your character went through so much loss that your mother leaving is just like i've never had separation anxiety that thing hit me sure that thing hit me so yeah so even with like people dying and stuff. I think what's helped me <laughs> is the fact that we're actually friends. <laughs> <laughs> so we hang out and it's like, mm, you that's really my character's die. trauma. You didn't really die. <laughs> yeah, you didn't really die. You're still around. It's just my character's trauma and I deal with my character's trauma yeah. as that. Um, so that's been the scariest part that sometimes the lines are completely blurred mm -hmm. and you have to be so careful of that and you need to take care of yourself. Not only yourself, but you need to take care of your character. Mm -hmm. Like I have to take care of Tiamo mm -hmm. because she also heals me. Mm -hmm. You know, there's stuff that she heals me from and I'm like, I'm not strong, but she's strong. But she's strong. So I have to find strength from somewhere for this girl to be strong, uh -huh. you know, and then up. Oh, is so strong so it's i have to take care of her i have Makes to make sense. sure that she's strong enough she's whatever enough for whatever comes yeah yeah Wow, she is Lirato Mokoka. Uh, she came in to hang with me today and it has been such a pleasure having a conversation with her. And we co-hosted the show actually as we, we usually did. do. And she had so much fun. Look I at her did. smile, look at her smile. I was so nervous, I was so nervous. I was like, how am I, what is this radio? How do you do radio? Yeah. I was like, what's my radio? I did it so well. Thank that you was so much. Smooth, eh? Yeah. That was really smooth. Thank you so much for yeah. coming through. Thank you so much for making time to hang me. with us. And uh, we will be, of course, supporting you and watching you and yeah. rooting for you. So keep doing the good work that you're doing. Thank you. We love you for you that. You too. Thank you. You too. Keep Thank building, you. keep growing. This is amazing. You're amazing. Thank you're an you. awesome vibe. Yeah. Thank which you. is rare Thank which you. is rare i appreciate it yeah yeah so remember on our youtube channel please do comment let us know what you think and also do subscribe it is at opulence radio we want your comments we want your subscription we want to hear and engage with you all the time so next week we've got another amazing guest you can see we only bring the best right so make sure that you tune in again next week on opulence radio